war machines stride the battlefield, metal grinds and machine spirits cry out for vengeance. The Knights of Art W have come to reclaim the fallen, to purge the unclean, and if necessary, grind them under the heel of Imperial truth. House Comentus will not go quietly, however. Beseeching the Dark Gods for their blessings, they attempt to repel these Imperial upstarts. The servants of the False Emperor will not be treated fairly or with honor. They do not deserve it. Their devotion to their corpse emperor shall be the root of their undoing. Will the Imperials survive? Will chaos reign? Who wins this battle for the ages? Let's find out! This is 40K in 40 minutes. Night Joust. Greetings 40k fans, your host JT McDowell here, and today we have a most dynamic battle for your viewing pleasure. I'm excited to be here, back at the studio again against Jin, playing Chaos Knights versus Imperial Knights. This should be a blast. Our deeds lie unremembered, but we have not forgotten you, brother. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. Mubin Talati brings Payon's own Chaos Knights to do battle with Mr. Imperium Jin Singh and these gorgeous knights painted and built by this episode's sponsor, Art W. Hey everyone, it's Mubin again. I'm here to play some Chaos Knights today. I am going to be going up against Jin Singh. He's known him for years, he loves his Imperial Knights, and it's gonna be a knight fight. I'm Jin Singh, and I'm here to play with Imperial Knights Freeblades. I love Imperial Knights. I play Imperial Knights for many reasons, the models, the lore, and having two young kids, I save like two, three hours per game session, which is really huge, otherwise I wouldn't be able to play as much. And today, he's playing the knights painted and built for us by this episode's sponsor, Art W. What can I say about these knights? The folks at Art W have done an absolutely amazing job converting and painting this beautiful knight army for us. Magnetized options, amazingly realistic weathering, absolutely eye-popping paint effects, and downright stunning basing. They have done an absolutely brilliant job with these. We are incredibly impressed with their work, and should you be inspired as we were by these knights from Art W, why not get them to do some for you? As always, make sure to tell them Playon sent you. They were stunning, and it wasn't even just the paintwork, it's the dynamic poses that they put in, the basing, uh, all the minor conversions. Like, you might not tell on the camera, but the Knight Dominus, he just looks almost horrifying. He just looks so battle-weary and damaged. Like, the models were stunning. My list is, yeah, you heard it, four models, four models. Mubin is playing as House Comentus, making his demonic surge ability somewhat more consistent. His forces are led by a Knight Abominant with a Harbinger of Scrap Code, as well as Infernal Quest as Warlord traits. He has a Knight Desecrator for some serious firepower with the Diamonus, a Knight Rampager, as well as a Knight Tyrant for some more firepower. Big stompy killy robots, what is not to love? Today's mission setup is from the Tempest of War cards, and our primary mission is Direct Assault. Players will score four points for holding one objective, four more for holding two, and four more should they hold more than their opponent. In addition, today's mission rule is Sweep and Clear. Any objective secured unit holding an objective at the start of their command phase will continue to hold it until their opponent takes it away. Also, should you hold an objective you did not hold at the start of your turn, by the end of your turn, or destroy a unit that was in range of an objective, you can score an additional two primary points. Should either player manage both of these things, then they would score an additional three. Five. Uh, got a three. Go on then, you may defend. For the first time ever of playing Chaos Knights or Knights in general, I can hide them. There, there's a few hiding spots here. I have a few models that I do want to keep behind and hide, but a lot of stuff just wants to run at you and smash face. Warlord starting off this party. I see you a Warlord and I raise you a Dominus. Vexus Rexus is coming to play. I've got a slight advantage because I can hide three of my knights a lot easier than him. Now this table is amazing because you don't typically get to hide big models, but we can today, which is a, a godsend. My rampager. Oh! That's impressive. And you're not scared. I like that. This little fella be lurking right here, sir. I've got evil, the outcast now. Defeated 
Again? I don't like this at all. I've although twice defeated. Nope, no, it doesn't exist. I'm gonna have to banish him. He was found by my roaming band of Chaos Knights and was adopted into their ranks. Some of my little guys. We're gonna bring out the Olsen twins. This is the Knight Desecrator coming in. And this is Captain Morgan. Arr! Captain Morgan is gonna sit here and look after the Olsen twins. I'm gonna kill you, oh darling Moobin. Bring it. So I bring this pain to you. Win or lose, I just wanna see you die. Well, here's hoping I go first. I go first? Hope is for the fool and the weak. Let's do this, Jin. Good luck to me, and good a good game to you. To you. Yeah. Command phase. First thing I gotta do is draw some objectives. First one I've got is Blood and Guts. This is probably one I'm gonna burn. Moving is drawn Blood and Guts. He needs to kill three units in melee, overwhelming firepower, kill three units in shooting, and no prisoners. Remove 30 wounds worth of models. Looks like the Chaos Gods wanna kill, kill, kill. Continuing on in the command phase, I'm going to enact some demonic surges. Rampager. Three mortal wounds, please. I'm gonna take D3 mortal wounds, yes. and I'm gonna pick two traits off of the demonic surge table. You're uh, he takes two. He's going to take Demonic Hunger, which gives him plus three inches to his movement characteristic. Okay. And he's also going to take Demonic Fortitude, which means you cannot wound him on anything less than a four now. So your next command phase. The Abominant takes D3 Mortal Wounds for the Demonic Surge. Moobin chooses Demonic Fortitude as well as Demonic Power, and... His Relic does let him shrug off those Mortal Wounds on a two plus. Okay. Yes. Uh, he still takes one. one. With Demonic Power, he's going to boost his Volkite Combustor, so it is a plus one to its wound. The Knight Desecrator takes one mortal wound and also takes Demonic Fortitude and Hunger to get the extra movement. No Surge for Ivald this turn. That's an interesting choice. I think he may want to actually take Fortitude on him. Hmm, let's see how that plays out. First round, uh, my Dread Aura ability is Dread Host. So anything within 12 inches of any of my Chaos Knights will have minus one to their leadership. All right, so we're gonna start moving with the Abominant first. Watch out for the train moving. Oh, nope. kicking the train out of the way wow. with the feet of the abominant Titanic feet. Chaos is wrecking our table already. Looks like Moobin's decided to go around that centerpiece. This could be interesting as it does split his forces. Time for some psychic phase. Psychic phase? What's that, Moobin? It's what does heretics like to do. I'm gonna start with my first psychic power, Winds of the Warp. If I get this, he now has a five up to ignore wounds. Ooh, that's not good with a four. I will spend one of my command points to reroll that. Ooh, down to one already. Moobin spending a command point on a command reroll down to one. He successfully casts Winds of the Warp, gains a five up ignore damage, and he manages to smite for a mortal wound. And he does so with a seven. Yeah, just take one mortal wound. No, it's no. fine. I'm going to go into my shooting phase. I'm going to start with the Knight Abominant, and he's going to take six shots with his Volkite Combustor into... Jim, George, James, Morgan, whatever we're calling him. Wounding on twos, normally strength 10, but I have plus one to wound right now. Sounds good to me. I did, however, roll a six, which is gonna be an automatic three mortal wounds, plus the two saves. Uh, save, save, sir. Four shots, stubber. Uh, these are always the worst ones. It's always the stubbers. Ah! Oh! <laughs> I knew it. I knew it the minute you wounded. Four shots from the Rampager now, same target, no wounds. Evol is shooting Pirate. into the Gallant. Yeah. Oh, here it comes. Jind is spending two command points on the Imperial Knight Stratagem Rotate Ion Shield. He's gonna get a four up and vulnerable save against ranged attacks. He's out of command points, but he really needs that four up invuln to come through. So start with the shoulder cannons, because they're always the ones that don't usually end up doing much for me. Looking for threes. Hurrah! Oh no! Two damage! <laughs> Two D6 shots from his ectoplasma. Eight? Eight shots again. Oh That's my lord. Only drop one. And I rolled only one four. Oh no. Two, four, six, eight, ten damage? Two damage each, yeah. Are you kidding? 17 wounds taken. Oh, so he's only got seven left. Brimstone okay. Volcano Lance. D3 shots. For only one. Hitting on threes. Don't hit. Oh, I oh, said six yeah. to hit. Give me a one, give me a one. Come on. Oh, it's a one. 
Oh, the Volcano Lance fails. Movement command rolling for one command point, and it wounds. Glory, Pax Machina! That's not even in the tray! It's not in the tray! It's not in the tray! Need a four plus in a tray! It's a five! No, so close. Four up invuln save comes through for Jen. Still, that gallant is down to seven wounds. The Rampager is gonna try and finish off that gallant and needs an 11 for his charge. Can he make it? Please don't. Oh. No. Oof, and he fails. I really needed that Rampager to make that charge. It would have been a nice upswing for me, but I'm in danger. I haven't gotten any of my tallies yet. Taking a good chunk of wounds off of that gallant, but still nothing for no prisoners. I'm just gonna discard overwhelming firepower. Wubin manages two for holding an objective that he didn't hold at the beginning of his turn, and that's our score, two nothing at the end of Wubin's half of turn one. Neither player has command points remaining. Imperial Knight turn, I will get two command points because of my oafs defending the realm. So, beginning of turn, I've healed a wound there. Charlie's back, uh, 16 wounds taken. My paladin's gonna give both of these Helverans reroll ones to hit and wound. My knight gallant, he's gonna give him plus one to hit in combat and minus one damage. Now my Warglaive is in three inches of the objective, so this is sticky. Jin's pulled, grind them down. He needs to kill more than moving over a full game turn. Assassination needs to kill a character and capture the enemy outpost. Needs to take away Moobin's home objective. I will assassinate you while I catch your outpost while I grind you. Here I come to rock you like a hurricane. Looks like we're gonna have some night on night close combat here. Jent has set up to charge his gallant into Moobin's rampager. Larry is coming. Not Larry. Larry? Olsen twins? Who names these knights? Come on, Clementus. It's time to join the fight. Beep, beep, beep. Let's go to the shooting phase. Gallant sprays the rampager with some of its stubber shots. One. Take that, you blackguard. Oh, he takes it. I told you. Warglaves open up on the rampager, no effect, and the thermal spear also misses. Well now, this is not quite going the way that it needs to, so it's time to bring out the heavy guns maybe. He will employ a one command point stratagem called Strength from Exile. Jind is spending one of his two command points on Strength from Exile. That's a free blade specific stratagem. That's gonna give him reroll ones to hit and wound on his Castellan. It's gonna make it a little bit more consistent. Castellan opens up under that rampager, but the big guns are going into the tyrant. Four ups. <laughs> Four damage. Down to 17 wounds. Q Godzilla warming up the scales. <laughs> Free shots! <laughs> One hit. I like it. I like it. Command reroll. Ooh. Okay. Two hits. Twos. Rerolling ones. No need to, sir. All right. Five up involves. <laughs> Two wounds, Mubin using his last command point to reroll and try and save one of these, and he fails. 11 damage to the tyrant from the Castellan's big guns. 11 damage, all right. So that is gonna bring him down to 17. Time to fire Plasma Decimator. How many shots? Ooh, it's eight. Bam! Bam! 12 more wounds from the Plasma Guns, and the tyrant is down to five left. The Knight Paladin is gonna fire absolutely everything he has. Into the Rampager. Paladin opens up into the Rampager and down to four wounds remaining. Uh, make one. That's down to right. four. That's right. So both of these guys into your Tyrant. Oh, glorious. Nothing. Charge phase. I will charge you. My Gallant is in prime position to charge the Rampager. Mano on mano, see which, which knight wins. But it's not about killing his knight, it's also about getting my guy onto his objective. I have no hope. Yeah. Would you like to stand and shout insults at me? He's probably doing that anyways. <laughs> Four, yeah. nine! A mighty nine! Just the gallant to the rampager. The aura of corruption has dropped the gallant by minus one strength, but that still doesn't matter when you're hitting as hard as he is. I will make a murder of you with my sword. <laughs> They're gonna punch you! Punch! Six damage! That does it for him. This is Nick's favorite part. Does he explode? 
<laughs> no, he doesn't. Oh, no. Not the Rampager. I will go take this objective for the Emperor. All right, so now that combat's done, I have some shenanigans in the morale phase. The Knight Abominant is going to invoke his Harbinger of Scrap Code. Mm -hmm. And the only target within 18 inches is that poor, poor Warglaive. Would you go ahead and make a leadership test for me? I would love to, dear, dear. And would you kindly fail it? I would love to disappoint you. Oh, six, I'm so sorry, sir. <sighs> That's okay. So I think before I give my turn to you, I'm gonna discard, grind him down, and capture the enemy outpost. And a turn one, and we've got a score of three to two in favor of the Imperial Knights. However, Jind has discarded, grind them down, and capture the enemy outpost. He's not gonna be able to score anything but assassination. Movin did discard overwhelming firepower, so he's got blood and guts still and no prisoners. Neither player ends the turn with any command points. Start a turn two for Mubin. Both players gain a command point, and Mubin scores eight on primary to make our score presently 10 to three. Mubin's drawn Storm Hostile objective. He needs to flip control of one of the objectives from Jin's control to his. I'm going to take some Demonic Surges here. I'm gonna start with Evil. Demonic Surge for Eyeball the Tyrant. He takes Demonic Power as well as Demonic Fortitude here. Hunger and Resilience on the Desecrator, and the Abominant takes Power and Fortitude. And then for Battle Round Two, I'm going to progress my Harbingers of Dread table. Mubin has switched over to Geist Storm. That means Jind, unless he succeeds on a leadership test, has to attack the closest target. Prince is gonna take a few steps forward on that objective, just close enough. Abominant moves up to take that objective from the Armager. Does have uh, objective secured, so he's actually sticking the home objective, this one in No Man's Land, and now that one as well. Oh. With the models that I have, and the fact that we're playing with sticky objectives, if I focus on the objectives, I might be able to pull ahead and secure a victory. He's just gonna stomp through as well. Oh, don't kick the train again, kick you. Kick the train. No, no. Kick the train. No. So start with the good old Winds of the Warp. Ignore wounds on a five. He does with a 10 again. He's just gonna smite that poor little Warglaive. He does with a seven again. Warglaive is getting smoked and he takes a mortal wound. Oh. He's consistent, if nothing. I'm actually going to start with Evil. Shooting phase now, and Mubin's using the Chaos Knight stratagem Trail of Destruction for one command point. Target within range of an objective marker, he gets to reroll hits of one. He's out of command points, but the Volcano Lance goes into the Paladin, and a whole bunch of little guns go into that Gallant. Brimstone Volcano Lance first for okay. D3 shots. Yeah, how many shots? I get two shots. Nothing, Snake Eyes, perfect. Oh, no. So what I expected out of him, it's fine. Okay, Melters, four Melters. On fours. Only winning on fours though. Bam, nothing. Oh no, Two both. D6 plus four. Oh, that's a, that's um. Oh, the Melters, take him down. Here comes righteous vengeance. We can do this again. Oh, oh my God. Jin, the little excited there as the gallant explodes. Is that Jin Singh or is that Nick Fraze? A four plus to kill you. It's a two. <laughs> would have been four, would have been so epic. Oh, that's why he's moving. I mean, even bleeding and, and almost dead, his tyrant still took out my poor gallant. With that kill, I've now gained favor with Zinch. I now have a four up invul at all times. He's gonna need it. Yeah, he's gonna need it. I'm going to shoot the Desecrator next. Okay. And he's gonna fire into the Paladin. Okay. He has three shots with his Diamonus. Really, Dice? I failed them all. Two, two, and a one. The Abominant. I'll shoot the Paladin with the Volkite Destructor. The Stubbers will go into the little guy and then I'm gonna charge the little guy when it comes to it. So the six shots with the Volkite Destructor. I also rolled two sixes in there. Yeah. Which means it's gonna be a total of six mortal wounds automatically. Oh no. 12 wounds from the Abominant into that Paladin. That's pretty decent. The Abominant is gonna charge the poor little Warglaive. Charge phase, the Abominant goes into the Warglaive. It's in trouble. Jin is using the Imperial Knight stratagem Survivors of Strife. That Armager is going to get effectively transhuman physiology. It can only be wounded on a four or better. Got four saves to make an AP2. If I don't pass even one of these, I'm dead. Got this. We passed Ooh. two. I would have taken six. Yep. But because I'm under, still under the influence of the Bondsman ability till my next command phase, gotcha. he reduces damage by one. Only four ah. wounds taken. 
Five wounds left, all right. D3 from the Bale Mace, oh, AKA oh, my tail. No. Oh no. What about now, Mubin? Nine Perfect. wounds taken. You get to fight back. Armager does a couple wounds back to the Abominant. Five ups to ignore. Oh. He ignores one. Because it's the morale phase, the Harbingers of Scrap Code. Oh, he is just so, he is just so with it. And a movement's turn two. We've got a score of 18 to three. He's discarded Blood and Guts. He scored Storm Hostile Objective, and he's managed 24 wounds on no prisoners. We've got eight on primary, five on the second primary, and five secondary points for 18 to Jin's three. I should have killed that Warglaive. The Abominant should have killed that Warglaive. How is it surviving? I, I can't actually believe it, but I'm surviving somehow. Mano on mano, just little guy versus big. But he's obsec, and I forgot all about that. So he's actually gonna cause a lot of problems, I think, in later turns if I can't get this guy out soon. Two command points for his vows, Mubin gains one, and Jin draws new secondaries. He's pulled Investigate Sights and Battlefield Supremacy. Investigate Sights needs him to do an action, but Battlefield Supremacy just means holding more objectives than Mubin. I am no longer bracketed here, my friend, because I'm back to 11. Woo. I'm no longer bracketed here, I'm at, back at five. Command phase shenanigans. Okay. This little friend will reroll once to hit and wound in all phases. Okay. and still the all-important minus one damage. Jin is in a real quandary here. He has to be concerned about his knightly honor. He'll lose points if he falls back. I will use my once per game ability from him. Yep. Because he's a, a knight of the exalted court, he can use a battle tactic stratagem for free once per game. And so there's one called flank speed. And what flank speed's gonna do is it will allow me to add nine inches to my move here. So I now move 21 inches. phase, my warglaive is going to shoot directly up, try to get under your chin plate and straight into your head for a headshot on fours. Nothing! <laughs> that whole in here, he's a hunter of beasts. Oh, yes. And tickling you on fives. Yes, nothing. Nothing. The Hulvarian at the back. <laughs> my friend, you're scaring me there. He's got nine shots with his auto cannons. Hitting on twos! Oh no, he still fails enough to die. Tyrant goes down to combine shooting from those armagers. No, evil, why? No, the tyrant's gone. All right, Knight Paladin is gonna shoot your... Desecrator. Desecrator. Rapid fire battle cannon. To the face, always oh, running Ooh, low on ammo. Four shots. The Paladin opens up into the Desecrator, no effect. He rolls a six. He's okay. He ABC, baby, always be charging. Okay. The Paladin is gonna try and take out your abominable abominant. Attempt to charge the Paladin, fails. Jin using a command point to reroll. He's down to one, and he still fails. So no successful charges, no. which means the abominant gets to strike oh, first. Oh no. Jin is gonna use the Imperial Knight's stratagem, Survivors of Strife, for one command point. Takes him down to zero. However, once again, he'll only be able to be wounded on a four or better. Only one. He takes uh, two damage. And then D3 from his tail. Hits with both. Wounds with both. Saves one. Two damage, down to one. One damage. Ha! Take that, Mubin. Ha, two turns in a row. Tiny little baby is holding up your general. You should be ashamed of yourself. Warclave lives. Claps back and manages to strip some wounds off of that abominant. So down to 17 for him. I'm gonna make you Harbinger of the Scrap Code again. No. That's again failing. Man, that's nine mortal wounds that he could have taken that he hasn't. He's gotta feel good about that. And a turn two, Mubin still has a command point. Jind is out, and we have a score of 18 to 10 in favor of Mubin. Both players gain a command point, putting Mubin at two and Jind at one. I also score my primaries. I'm holding one. Holding two, I'm holding more. So that's gonna bump me to 30 points. I got some objectives to draw. First one is assassination. Hold the line. Mubin spends a command point on new orders, discarding one to draw. Area denial. 
also have some demonic surges to do. Time for demonic surges, and Moopin is just making his stuff harder to hit and hit harder with all these wonderful rolls of silliness. So for my dread table, I'm gonna continue down the path of darkness, and now any units that you choose to shoot at outside of 12 inches, are minus one to hit. I'm well, going to that's nice him. and easy. How many points yep. has that just got you? Five? That's just five points right there, just for him to move over there. Killing the little guy isn't as big of a deal as the assassination is. The Abominant backs off from the Warglaive to be able to shoot his choice of targets and, of course, charge back in again. Psychic phase. I'm going to continue with the Winds of the Warp. Command reroll. He's out of command points and fails again. <laughs> and for his second power, he's just going to smite the little guy. Two more mortal wounds. 10 wounds taken. Going on to shooting phase. Desecrator is going to start first. The Night Desecrator splits fire here. What do we say about split fire, everybody? Don't do it. The Stubbers into the little guy. Drop the Diamonus into the Paladin. Stubbers first. He freeze. Gets two. two wounds. If I failed it's them enough. both. If it's I enough. Failed. Do it. I passed and uh, I passed. I passed both. Diamonus goes into the Paladin. Dang. Oh no! Oh. The Paladin fails his save. Jin to spend his last command point on a command reroll. Succeeds! The Abominant is gonna go ahead and stubber the little guy, and then he's gonna shoot his big gun into the Paladin as well. Abominant fires its stubber into the armor, go to no effect, and the Volkite into the Paladin for six more damage. Seven wounds left on the Knight Paladin. Because I'm a super heavy walker and I fell back, you would like to charge? I still get to charge. Abominant charges back into the Warglaive. Starting with the nine attacks from the Electro Scourge. Five saves, the five up. And down it goes. Can he take you out with a bit of spite? No, he doesn't. Yes. Bye-bye. With that kill, the Abominant is now favored with the Dark Master. So that means you can no longer hit him on anything less than a four. Okay. Cannot wound him on less than a four. Yeah. And you cannot reroll against him. Oh, and because it's the morale phase again, because there is always a morale phase. Ooh, the Paladin takes three mortal wounds from Harbinger of the Scrap Code. It's finally paid off. It's down to four wounds remaining. It worked. The Harbinger of Scrap Code worked. Also, end of turn, I will score Area Denial for another five points. Okay. That will also score me my Nora Prisoners. So that's another five points. Okay. So I score an additional two also for killing the poor Warglaive that was sitting on that objective. And at turn three for the Chaos Knights, we've got a score of 27 primary and 15 secondary for 42. Imperial Knights are sitting at 10 with 10 primary and no secondary score. It went from great to really bad really quickly. What the heck is happening here, guys? Like, I outnumber him, I outwound him, I outgun him, but he's just like destroying on scores. I don't know what's gonna happen now. I'm, I'm kind of like, uh, don't tell Mubin, uh, but I'm a bit worried. Command points, still two points of honor, so I'm still on it. Let's do this. Jin draws no new secondaries as he already has three. Jin is really falling behind on secondaries. I don't know if he's gonna have enough time to catch up. Heal a wound, back to full health. Healing a wound, I will bastardize the bastards. Bastard Helm, again with the Armagers. And now, we shall eliminate you with extreme prejudice. The Paladin backs off. Castellan rushes in to negate that minus one to hit from Mubin's dread effect. Halvorns are closing up as the objective they started on is held until Mubin takes it, which at this point in the game isn't very likely. Shooting, sir. Shooting. All right. Who's starting the party? My mighty Dominus class, Castellan, is going to put his Melter into him. Castellan chooses to shoot Melter into the Abominant and everything else into the Desecrator. Jind is using Strength from Exile and Epic Deed Stratagem from the Freeblades to get reroll ones to hit and wound on at least the Desecrator. Melter on fours. On fours, nothing. The Melters fail. Battle cannons on the top. Fives. Four ups. Two wounds. Oh. Mighty missile. Pew! Pew! Wounds. No invulnerable save. Pew! One damage, command reroll. Four damage. Lance time. Three shots. Fours. Reroll the ones. Fours because you're mighty. One wound. He's okay. I hate you so much sometimes. <laughs> and then seven shots with plasma. Plasma decimator. This was overcharged, correct? Always be overcharging. Failed horrifically. Oh, that was a brutal roll. Uh, two wounds. Five ups again. Make one failed one. Down to 10. The bastard is going to shoot you. 
got oh six. Mm. Eight shots? Eight shots. Death Creator is really getting shot up. Hitting on fours. There you go. Winding on fours. Two. Fives. Nope, fails well. Movement's trying to use a command reroll here. He's out of command points and he still fails. Six wounds left. Stubber. Ah. He doesn't care about that one. The other one's gonna fire his stubber. How That's many great. shots? And then wounding on fours. Two. Stubber. Makes both. Oh, I like hate a you. champ. I hate you. Paladin tries to finish him off. Two of them. AP two, two, so five. Oh! Makes them both. Like a champion! No joy! He's got six left. I'm gonna have to charge you with a freaking Dominus, aren't I? Why? Because I gotta kill you somehow. I mean, you can try, but I'm... I... Your call. Always be charging, new women. The Castellan charges the Abominant. He's in! The Helverin charge fails! Paladin fails! So many failed charges, and I don't know if the Castellan really wants to be here. Hitting on four. Castellan goes into the Abominant and actually manages to do a wound. <laughs> I take two damage. I only have four wounds left. However, the Blasphemous Engine lets me count as double my wounds. Abominant does some serious work back at the Castellan. I make one. And then the Bale Mace. Whip him with the tail for three hits. On fours. Not that. Morale phase. Would your Dominus kindly make a dread test for me? Haha, -ha, take three more mortal wounds and you now count as half your wounds remaining. End of turn three complete. We've got 42 to 18. I'll get rid of investigate sites. Jin really has to start scoring secondaries. If he doesn't, Mubin is just gonna run away with this game. Start of my command phase, I'm going to score 12 points again. 54 to 18 now in favor of Chaos Knights and Commander Mubin Talati. Now for some objectives. Drawing Teleport Homer and Battlefield Supremacy. It's really odd for Chaos Knights to be holding things. So I get to move my Dread Table further, and I'm going to actually switch away from Darkness into Doom. Wailing Geists. So an enemy unit within Dread range of his models are minus two leadership. That should make that Harbinger of the Scrap Code work a bit better. Now for the fun part, because this is where I'm just gonna hurt myself. D3 Mortal Wounds on the Abominant. For a single Mortal Wound. Does he take it? Does he ignore it? He does. Abominant can again only be wounded on fours and has a bonus to wound. And the Desecrator's getting three inches to move here. Into the movement phase. I am actually going to step back with my knight again. Absolutely. So, start with Winds of the Warp. Okay. Try to give myself that five up ignore wounds again. He gets it with a seven. He smites into the Castellan, only one mortal. He really hasn't done a lot of smite work today. I'm gonna to start with the Desecrator. Everything must go into the Paladin. The Stubbers. There you go. There you go, you're fine. And then the one that actually counts, three shots. Yes. Fours, because he's transhuman. Mmm, that's right. Diamonus into the Paladin, and Mubin uses a command reroll to wound. Oh, Worth no! it! I gotta save this with a command reroll. Yeah. Or just save it naturally. Oh no. Jin responds with a command reroll to make the save. No command points left for either player, but what an exchange! <sighs> Abominant firing now into the Paladin. Sixes. No sixes. Uh, I just do get one though. Four up save. He makes it. Abominant charges into the Castellan and the Desecrator needs a seven inch charge and fails. You know, back in the movement phase, I thought he was making a mistake by not moving that Desecrator up and it looks like it is. I'm in combat. That's, That's something. Electro Scourge on fours, let's go. Love it. Okay. D3 from the tail. Hits. Does it wound? It does. All and you right. take it. A couple wounds from the Abominant. Clapback manages one wound, but with movements ignored damage, boom. No joy. What an exchange. Morale phase. Go ahead and make a test on him again. And again, Harbinger of the Scrap Code. The Castellan fails again. He's down to 15 wounds. So end of my turn. Oh, no. I'm going to discard Deploy Teleport Homers. I do score Battlefield Supremacy, so another there. five points there. Mid-turn four, we've got 59 points for the Chaos Knights and 18 for the Imperial Knights, but he's still got two full turns to play. Mubin does not have a lot of models left on the field, so Jin should start racking up some points pretty quick. I get two command points. Okay. 
I got my one. I will draw a card. Defend Stronghold. He draws Defend Stronghold as his third secondary. Command phase stuff. Jin healing wounds again from the Free Blade Army of Renown ability. The nice thing about you failing the charge is I'm on the move. He will also, by the way, spend his two command points to be at full bracket for the turn. Jin is spending his two command points on Machine Spirit Resurgent so that his Castellan is able to operate at full bracket. Paladin tries to take down the Abominant with six shots, hitting on fives. Two hits. He's okay? He loves it. Stubbery stubbers. Nothing. Elvaren. Freeze. No fours. fours. Always fours. Two wounds. Five ups. Makes neither. I have to command point reroll. Nope. Five ups to shrug. I get to save six of these. Not enough. Assassination, baby. Five points. And he explodes. Woo! Yay, Nick. We have an explosion. 2d6 inches for range. For eight inches. Gets my Paladin, my Helvaren, my Castellant, Desecrator. Okay, how many wounds do you put on my poor Helvaren? 2d6. Four wounds. And on this guy. Look for six. Five. Uh, this big guy. It only takes two. See, now how many wounds has you got left? Uh, he's got nine left. Three. All right, he takes three. So I now control three objectives. My stubbers into your night. Just the stubbers? Oh man. I thought I've made some tough choices in life. Finding a life partner, having kids, work, everything. But none of that even compares to the choice I just made now between do I kill the desecrator out flat, almost guaranteed, but then I'm probably gonna lose because he's got two darn sticky objectives, right? And that means even if he's dead, He's gonna get eight points. And that means I don't think I can catch him even if I max everything out. Or I've gotta leave that punk alive, try and charge into combat with my one model that has no combat potential, my Dominus, and somehow live through his combat round. Jind is preferring to charge into the Desecrator here rather than shoot it. If he can take that objective away from Mubin, then he's going to score more secondary. So rather than shoot it and kill it and not be able to move, he's going to try to score this turn and next turn. Smart play. All right. Hitting on fours. Fours. Oh, no. Castellan fails to kill the Desecrator, even acting at top bracket. So what's happened is when I charged you, yep. I'm three inches from the objective to take it from you, yep. but I've left an exactly four inch gap here, so you are unable to move past me. Rev up that chainsword. Two wounds back from the Desecrator, and it kills the Castellan. Got the kill. He got the kill. I got the kill. That Castellan blows, the Desecrator is gonna go down, and he doesn't. And that scores me my assassinate for another five points. D3 plus three for the consolidate. So free full board. six inches. He's just gonna go the full six. Yep. So he's just gonna whoop, take that. And it turn four for the Imperial Knights. And we've got a score of 64 for Chaos, 38 for Imperial Knights. Mubin can only score another six primary points. So this game is well within striking range as Jind is almost guaranteed to score 12 on his final turn for primary. On to turn five, Mubin goes up to 70 points now, 45 primary, 25 secondary. He takes a mortal wound for his demonic surge, down to three wounds, but gains unable to be wounded on less than fours. And now to see what the magic deck has to say. Three new secondaries for Mubin here, capture enemy outpost, no retreat, no surrender, and secure no man's land. He's moving up the desecrated to attempt to steal Jin's home objective and really put this game away. Shooting phase. He's just gonna take the shots into the Helvrin. Diamonos fires into the Armager. Jin responds with the Imperial Knight stratagem, Survivors of Strife. He's out of command points, but this may save the Helvrin, and that could be huge should Mubin fail to get to that objective. Won't do it. No. Charging into the Paladin. Did you do this for me? An 11. Wait, that's a 12. I gotta go for the sweep, because just one has to go through. Hitting on fours. There's three. Only sixes. Nothing. Now do you bring me down with you? Can I bring you out in spite 
Oh, no. and Paladin goes down. That's a huge swing. That takes away Defense Stronghold, and that should probably end the game. Some serious position play for Mubin has put this game out of reach for Jin. With a final score of 85 to 75, despite being completely tabled, your victor is Mubin and his Chaos Knights. It was amazing, and it was Knights versus Knights. It was a blast. What an awesome time that was, Mubin. You're a star. I'm gonna get you next time. Congratulations to Mubin. What a well played and fought game. Thanks so much to Jin for being a fantastic opponent. Also, a special thanks again to this episode's sponsor, Art W. The nights they did for us are absolutely fantastic. If you're in the market for custom built, painted, or both, we highly recommend Art W. Fantastic work for sure. Be sure to check out our Instagram for more shots of these beautiful models. Check out our Patreon as well for exclusive after battle report with Nick, Mubin, and Jin. That's it for us here at the Play On Studios. On behalf of everyone here, thank you for joining us. As always, this is your host, JT McDowell, saying, until the next time you see us in the grim dark universe of the far flung future, play on. I had such an awesome time with Mubin. Like, we've only played on Play On, and both times have been incredible. So it was great to get to, to task with Mubin. Love the models, the board. It's been such a great time and probably gonna get therapy for my Dominus going. Great experience, great challenge, and just all around good fun. Anything else you wanna say? Damn it, Tech.